It was the night before Jesus was crucified. Jesus had shared a last supper with His disciples. Jesus had taken His followers to His favorite quiet place, the Olive Garden. But it wasn't to be quiet for long. Jesus was upset. Jesus needed His closest friends to support Him. But they had dozed off quietly, oblivious to the violence that was about to erupt. Jesus had prayed three times, let this cup pass, let this cup pass, let this cup pass. But it wasn't going to pass. As it was getting late, a troop of temple soldiers broke the quiet scene, and this quietness was broken by a kiss. A kiss of betrayal. Listen to John 18. Whom do you seek? And they answered him, a Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am He. And when they, they heard Him say that, I am He, they withdrew back and fell to the ground. So He asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I told you, Ego a me. I am. When Peter woke up realizing what was going on, he picked up his sword, ready to defend his Lord. Peter remembered the words he had spoken to his Lord just hours before. Listen to Mark chapter 14. Peter said to Jesus, even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter was emphatic. If I must die with you, Lord, I will not deny you. Now was the time for violence. No denial from me, Peter thought. Now was the time to start a rebellion. Now was the time to begin the advance of the kingdom. A sword for the Lord and Yeshua. Off with his head. Peter missed his head, got an ear. Listen to Luke 22. And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Matthew 26. Then Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its place for all who take the sword will perish with the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father and He will send me uh, more than 12 legions of angels? Focus with me. That would have been the moment for fighting. If Jesus ever intended His followers to use force to advance His kingdom, that was the moment. Peter knew it. I will die for you. If Jesus had wanted to use force or hatred or violence or brutality or any earthly power to advance His kingdom, that would have been the moment. But Jesus said, if I wanted to use force, my Father would have sent me twelve legions of angels. All who draw the sword will die by the sword. No more of this. No more violence. No more hatred. No more power of the sword. The kingdom of heaven advances by the sacrificial power of the cross. Never violence. Never hatred. Never manipulation. The only way to win the hearts of humanity is with peace. 
piece is the seventh box on our list of what it means to be a Christian. Box number seven. Live peaceably with all. Romans 12, 14 through 21. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil, but overcome evil, but overcome evil. Help me out, but overcome evil, but overcome evil, but overcome evil. Make sure you're all waking up there a second. Let's break down this this paragraph. This is a significant paragraph. It's significant. In the letter of Paul to the Romans, it's significant for us today. Let's break it down. Bless those who persecute you. Bless, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Paul knows the words of Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. But I say to you, Jesus says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Blessing those who are opposed to you is an act of boundary removing. Say that again, Tim. Blessing those who are opposed to you is an act of taking down boundaries. Just as cursing an enemy reinforces the boundaries, deepens the divide, Screaming curses at the other escalates the walls being built while calling upon blessings to others who oppose to you brings down those walls. Bless those who persecute you. For us to conquer the world, we must remove the boundaries that divide. To call upon God to bless an enemy changes everything. It's counterintuitive. It's the paradox of the gospel power. Capturing the hearts of the others, capturing the hearts of the others requires that we bless them and not curse them. And here's how Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Paul must have known the words of Jesus on the mount. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We must enter into the joy and sorrow of others. Connections with the others, as if they are us, is at the heart of being able to bless those who oppose us. Attempting to understand what the other's fears are, what the other's hurts are, what the other's joys are, making that empathetic connection is essential. The paradox of Christian victory is that we sympathize with the others. The others are people too. One of my favorite, one of my most famous sayings. <laughs> um, this is off script, Daniel. One of my favorite saying, famous is from Max Headroom: "Cars are people too, but people are people too. The others are people too. 
the others love their children as much as you do. No. The others love their children as much as you do. The others want the same things for their life that you do. The others weep as you weep. In order for our mission to reach the hearts of the nations, we must rejoice with their rejoicing and weep with their hurts. Which leads us to live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Jesus said it this way, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now the Yoda version is more radical. Listen to the Young's literal translation of Romans 12, 16. Of the, of the same mind, one toward another, not minding the high things, but with the lowly going along. Become not wise in your own counsel. Of the same mind, one toward another. Going along with the lowly. Become not wise in your own conceit. That thought would have been radical in Paul's world. Everyone of the same mind. You're going along with the low. You're not superior to anyone. Racial equality in Paul's world? What? That's ridiculous. A third of the people were playing up slaves. They can't be equal. All those Jewish people, they're certainly not equal. Obviously, God, the gods love the Romans more than everyone else. Women and children and old Obviously inferior. Any self-respecting Roman citizen would have scoffed at the notion of people being the same as the others. But for us to conquer the hearts of the nation, there must be equality for all. For Paul, the apostle to the ethnos, the apostle to the others, was to him that was the heart of the gospel. God called Paul to be the light to the others. God called uh, Paul called the Roman Christians to be the light to the others. We are called to be the light to the others. Being of the same mind, going along with the lowly, equality across the board is the heart of the gospel. It is the power of the cross. This leads to our next phrase. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Jesus said it in Matthew 5. You've heard that it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, give him your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. The problem with racial inequality with its accompanying revenge is that one of our lives is equal to two of your lives. If you hurt us X amount, we have to retaliate with 2X because we're worth twice of you. And of course, you think you're worth more than me, and so the 2X becomes 4X, the 4X becomes 8X, 16X, 32X, to infinity and beyond. The escalation of hatred is the problem with racial inequality. Now, interestingly... The eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth in the Old Testament was only an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It was 1x equals 1x. But Jesus and Paul are advocating 1x equals 0x. 
to do the honorable, to be the sacrificial, to give the love. That is the power of the cross. Jesus turned the injustice of the cross into the power to conquer the world. And that is our model. Which leads us to peace. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Sons of God, daughters of God, children of God, promote peace. In peace, hearts can be changed. Power of any sort does not change the heart. The peace of the gospel captures hearts. You cannot control others. You may have noticed that. You cannot control others. But as far as it depends upon you, live in peace. Then Paul tells us how it works. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Revenge is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you'll heap burning coals on his head. Jesus says it this way in Matthew 6. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The power of forgiveness changes hearts. Wrath is God's job. Revenge can be turned over to God. Now and then, God will make all things right. Our job is to respond in love. Which leads us to the conclusion, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Or as Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Being merciful, allowing others' insults to pass through you, cutting other people slack, not allowing the escalation of evil, is how the gospel overcomes. Anybody want to take a guess at what the word overcome is in Greek? Where's our Greek scholars? They must be watching online. The Greek word for overcome is, it's also a shoe name. Adidas. No. Nike. Nike. The Greek word for overcome. Listen to how Paul uses the word Nike in Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for thy sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sleep sheep to be slaughtered. But in, I'm going to say through, but through all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer. That's hyper Nike. We overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. We conquer the world by hyper nike evil with good. Our response to evil is to do good. And that is the power of the Gospel. And if you can do that, you can check box 7. Let's put it all together quickly. All seven of our boxes. What does it mean to be a Christian checklist? What does it mean to be a Christian? Number one, you live a living sacrifice. You're overwhelmed with the mercies of God. You join Jesus on the altar to live as a living sacrifice. A sacrifice that's committed to serve others. Box two, you're transformed. You change your thinking. You ask, what is the will of God for my life? And the answer is small acts of perfection. Which is prevented by, box number three, not being Super minded. Arrogance cannot stay on the altar. Humility is the power humility is the power of the gospel. Number four, you know your praxis. You know that you've been grace gifted to work within the body to advance the kingdom. But that must be genuine. Box five, be unwaxed. 
we be the real to see the real. We remove our own wax to be able to see below the wax of others. Which leads us to box six. Don't get your dauber down. We have a mission that's too important to become discouraged. We are called to Nike the world. The hope of that mission is the reality of what's going to happen one day. We can see hope and have joy. The tribulations and the setbacks and the heartaches are there, but they too shall pass. We talk to God about our hurts. We're doing good, and it pumps us up. In order to, box number seven, live peaceably with all. Overcoming evil by doing good requires us to understand all, all are equal. To connect to the reality and empathy. To never be haughty, but overcome evil by the power of the Gospel. And that is what it means to be a Christian.